welcome back. I know it's been way too long since I've recorded a full video, and I'm pretty sure I talked about that in the last one. It's just a combination of a bunch of things. Um, and I could go and list them all and waste your time, but I'm not going to get to that. I'm not going to just tell you all my excuses of why I couldn't record. I'm just going to start recording, and we're going to go straight into the video. This video is going to be a beginner's guide to calisthenics. You might not even know what calisthenics are. Calisthenics are basically exercises you can do with just your body or little to no equipment. And basically, you can use your body and have control, have this sense of control over it and do these cool things and learn these cool new skills and stuff. And you can get shredded and big uh, with calisthenics too, pretty, um, with a lot of work and effort you can. And it is really frustrating when you first start. When I first started calisthenics, um, I had the starter package, you know, uh, lean, muscular, but not, not filled out my frame at all, really. Um, but I was just, I was just fit and athletic and had a pretty good physique to start off with. So I was blessed for that and I'm grateful for that. Um, but basically when I started, I could do a frog stand for like five seconds or something like that, three to five seconds. And I could do push-ups, I could do pull-ups, and that was about it. Over time, though, I progressed further, and I started looking into this calisthenics thing, and I was like, man, this is pretty cool, actually. Because I was inspired by these people just working out on the street, or um, just being able to do these cool things with your body. Um, like muscle-ups, and one-arm pull-ups, planks, and handstand push-ups, and front levers, all these cool calisthenic skills. I saw people doing them, and I saw that those guys were, like, shredded, too, and, and pretty big. And I was like, I, I want to do that. I want to learn calisthenic skills because I think it's really cool, and it's a great way to... Um, have a sense of control over your body, which I think is pretty neat. And I think that's one of the greatest uh, gifts of calisthenics. And so why should you do it? Well, I think for anybody starting off into working out, calisthenics is a great um, starting place. Like just the basics, just push-ups, air squats, jump squats, maybe too. Um, Whatever you can do, you know, if you if you can't do a push-up, you can do a wall push-up and you can slowly decline it until you're at push-up level and able and able to rep out good form uh, push-ups. And then you can go the reverse and progress to decline push-ups. So easiest and, a, you know, that's like a push-up and then decline push-ups. <laughs> And so there's all this cool, like, leveling up, basically, to calisthenics. And wherever you start, um, you might not have the start, the same start someone else does, and that's okay. It just means when you reach your goals, it's going to be so much more worth it. And you're going to keep it. That person who can already do you know, um, a couple pull-ups and, uh, maybe, maybe even a muscle-up, they might not be consistent, or they might lose consistency after a while, because they're like, oh, I can do it, and then they lose progress with calisthenics, or they don't even reach the goals that you reach, because they might take it for granted, and I've done that in the past. I've taken my physique and gifted uh strength for granted because 
not everybody starts off like that um, before getting into self-improvement or calisthenics or weightlifting. And I just think that it's a great way to display uh, control over your body and have that feeling of just power um, with that. Anyways, we're going to get straight into the first exercise. So, at the basic, the most basic level of push-ups, if maybe you are too heavy to do a normal push-up or you don't have the strength to do it yet, that's okay. You can start off with incline push-ups. And so you can just use a wall and over time you can decrease the incline or if you want, you could use gymnastic rings and I'll show that one, that version in a second as well. That one's a little more measurable with um, your progress of being able to decline it. And for how many you wanna do in a set, you're gonna wanna do to, you know, to failure um, till it's difficult to do another one and then try to do maybe one more. So I'll show you the incline push-up. Put your arms on it to whatever incline you need. Keep your feet together, your glutes engaged, and keep your whole body sort of straight. If that's the most, you, the lowest you can go to keep your form good, because you want to learn the form first. And then just move your feet back a little more, lower your hands a little. And then just go to whatever level feels comfortable for you until you can finally do a push-up on the ground, uh, just flat. Now I'm going to demonstrate the uh, push-ups on gym rings. All right, and now on to the ring push-ups. These are actually harder um, than a normal push-up because they do require more stability, but they're nice because you can get a nice stretch with them uh, and you can go a little deeper with that rep and get a larger range of motion. Trying to keep your body straight, your glutes engaged. And sort of pinching your shoulders. And you go down, and then you go up. And then of course we have um, just regular push-ups. Same thing, glutes engaged, tracting or pinching your shoulders at the bottom. And for your elbows, you know, you can, you don't want them tucked all the way to where it's, it's just triceps. Um, but you also don't want it out here where it's just like chicken winging, you know. But you want them at a 45 degree angle. Like that. And for decline push-ups, you're just going to repeat the same exact process but at a decline with your feet up here and you down here. So as we take a break from push-ups for now, we can talk about how, um, how you should set up your workouts. So what I recommend for starting off, especially with calisthenics, is push, pull, legs. 
push is basically pushing exercises. So we covered push-ups, uh, pull, pull-ups, legs, squat. Pretty simple. Um, but it does get a little more in-depth with the variations of push-ups and um, different things you can do with that. Uh, depending on the variation of push-up, you can hit a different muscle group. Um, I pointed to shoulder because I was thinking of pike push-ups. Pike push-ups, you can uh, work on growing your shoulders and strengthening those. And that will help if you're progressing to a handstand or especially handstand push-up. And if you want to hit your uh, triceps more, then you can do... Uh, diamond push-ups so you can do uh diamond push-ups for your triceps or like even just when you're because when you do that you tuck in your elbows a little more and it's working more your triceps for chest uh just push-ups or wide push-ups um are good too i'll show a clip of wide push-ups and then archer push-ups is a even harder variation of that, and those are pretty tough. The different variations of push-ups, there's, you can hit pretty much every muscle group, shoulders, triceps, chest, um, yeah, that's pretty much all the pushing muscles for your upper body, yeah. And then for pull day, pull-ups. That'll work out your back, I think your lats a little bit, and your biceps a little bit. But you can do chin-ups to focus on the biceps more if you want to grow those more. Um, for like ex example, recently um, I thought my arms were looking a little small compared to my torso, which they are. Like, look at this. I'm just my arms are a lot smaller than my whole t torso, like my torso, it's just built and my arms are just smaller. So that's why I chose to focus on doing chin-ups. And I did see, uh, I did see progress from that and I'm seeing progress from that, but I also haven't, um, done chin-ups in a little bit in a few days. So, so you can do chin-ups for your biceps. Uh, pull-ups if you want to work your back and get broad a more broad build um, get that aesthetic physique and um, sorry I'm a little congested um, you can do L sits uh, you can do L sits from hanging or you can do them from uh, pushing on a triceps uh, station or a dip station or even on the floor or just you can do it on a chair uh, I'll show a clip of that but basically the L sit you can work your abs really good with that and then moving down to your legs for quads you can do sissy squats for tibs tib raises um, you just need a wall in your body for that that's super easy um, and then you can do um, pistol squats as well. And then just explosive squats are great too. And I'll demonstrate those later in the video. So basically with calisthenics, you can hit, if you have a pull-up bar, you can hit pretty much every muscle group and build a great physique. Without a pull-up bar, it's really hard to work your back muscles because um, you don't really have any pulling movement you need like a row or a pull-up there's not really any better way to strengthen your back with just body weight um it's pretty tricky so well you can with just body weight but you need a pull-up bar basically so if you get a pull-up bar that's all you need you can get one on amazon for pretty cheap i think like a hundred or less you can get one um or you could just cash out $20, I think, for some gym rings, hang them up on a tree, then you can do pull-ups that way. And those are more difficult, but you will be stronger and more stable if you do 
do ring stuff. After we do pull, I'll explain like the rep ranges and how long you should wait between rest between each set and what should your recovery days look like and all of those details. So now we're going to be doing pull-ups to work our back muscles, our lat muscles, and our biceps as well, but primarily the back. And then chin-ups is a uh, little more uh, biceps. So we'll grab the bar, relax fully, pull up. Chin to bar, relax up, relax up, relax up, relax. For pull ups you grip like here, chin ups you grip here. One problem that some people have is um, I've seen is that some people don't have uh, either their forearms give out, their wrists give out, or their grip strength, just their pure grip will give out. So now that we've covered push days and pull days, we will move on to um, leg days after this quick break. And during this break, I'm going to talk to you about rep ranges um, and how many sets you should do for each exercise and what your workout should look like basically. So on your push days you're going to be doing different variations of push-ups pretty much if you're following this pure calisthenics plan. And then for pull days you're going to be doing pulling exercises uh, purely and then uh, leg day, you're going to be doing leg exercises. So push, pull legs, basically. And then you also have your rest day. And let me just talk about rest real quick. For rest days, you want to, you don't want to treat them as a lazy day. And it's okay, like, you can go and do fun things you like that, um, you know, like eating sweet treats or whatever, you know, playing games, that's fine. As long as you do active recovery, that's what's important is active recovery. So this can look different. You could do active recovery with just doing like, oh, I'm gonna do like a set or two of pull-ups, but I'm not gonna go to failure whatsoever. I'm just gonna get my muscles in that feel and just, just get them working a little bit, but you're not putting any strenuous pressure on them. Like say your max pull-ups is 10. You can do 10 pull-ups, you can do 30 push-ups, and you can do five sissy squats. Do like, um, I don't know, just crank out 10 push-ups real quick. Do three to five pull-ups, and then one to two uh, sissy squats or whatever. Or what you could do is you could just go on a run and do that, or you could do both, whatever you want. But over time, the more you work out and the longer you've been working out, the more you're gonna want to work out. We've covered that. We can move on to um, rep ranges. So if you're trying to just build, uh, you can have, a few goals. If your goal is to build a physique that you want, um, so maybe you're starting off and you don't have the physique you want, but you want to build up to the physique you want and whatever you can achieve with your body and you want to build up to your physique that you want, your dream physique. Or you could focus on 
just getting stronger um, to be um, to be able to better serve other people and better serve um, God then you can just focus on your strength and I'm not trying to guilt you into one or the other but whatever your goal is and your goal could be a mixture um, and if you do train if you are currently not working out and if you start working out you will gain muscle and you will get stronger so you'll meet both goals but over time it gets more difficult and then you have to focus on which goal you want to work on at that time um and so that just depends on your preference so for if you're just training for strength train with um for train for a lot more reps if you're working on building muscle then try to do lower rep ranges and focus on more intensity more weight i'm going to link down below a uh, notes that has a workout for you of push pull legs and you can adjust the rep ranges to be higher if you want to work on strength and lower if you want to work on building muscle so for building muscle i'd recommend between you want to be going to failure between 5 and 12 15 ish reps for strength you want to be going like 15 plus reps 15 to 30 reps no more than that really uh, 15 to 30 reps if you're going on strength you can adjust that accordingly and you can do weighted decline incline chin-ups pull-ups whatever you need to do to reach your goals personally and if you have any questions about that i will be gladly i'll be glad to answer any of those in the comments so just comment below if you have any questions about this workout plan or things you need to adjust for you personally and i can help you with that depending on your goals now we're going to move on to legs all right you've gotten this far if you have i'm very grateful to you and to end it off i'm going to show you guys calisthenic skills that you can do or work up to to be able to do in the near future or in the far future, however long it takes you. But one way or another, we'll get there together. And if you need any help, just comment down below and I'll try my best to help you in any way I can. Starting off, we're gonna be doing the frog stand, which will transition um, eventually into a um, handstand push-up because um, what you can do is you can start with frog stand and then transition into a handstand and then handstand push-up if you advance even further so I'm going to show you the frog stand and I'm going to show you the L-sit which are the first two skills that I learned back eight eight nine months ago and I thought it was the coolest thing ever when I first did them. So I'll show you. So starting off, we have the frog stand. And basically, you're gonna wanna put your hands on the ground and you're wanna get, gonna balance your knees sort of on your elbows. Like this. And now I'll show you a side view, the frog stand. Now I'll show you the second skill I learned. So this is going to be the L sit. All you need is a chair or a dip station will work just as well. 
and a pull-up bar can work as well. So you want to get your hands like this, you want to get a good grip, and then get up like this. If you can't do an L-sit, you can start off with just holding this, but then you can progress into an L-sit. And that is a great ab exercise as well, if you want to work on your abs. All right, so if you guys have watched it this far, I'm very grateful for you for watching this long and getting my audience retention up. I hope that this guide has helped you to progress in your calcinex journey or I helped you start your calcinex journey. And if you guys want a advanced guide on calcinics, I can plan to work on that in the future, um, if that's something you guys would be interested. If just one person comments it, I'll make the video, because um, I think that would be a very quality video that you guys would benefit greatly from, and it'd be super fun to make as well. So... To summarize it all up, we have had push, so push-ups, push-up variations, um, dips as well. If you have a dip station, you can just do dips. And then for pull, we've done pull-ups, chin-ups, we did an L-sit pull-up at the end. Um, basically to counteract the pushing movements, and that's why you can do it in or, like the days in a row and then legs work out your legs we did sissy squats pistol squats jump squats for explosive tr explosiveness and as well as covering recovery active recovery days or rest days and how i would do it is i would do monday push tuesday pull Wednesday legs, Thursday push, Friday pull, Saturday legs, and then Sunday, the day of rest. That is how I would follow this calisthenics workout, and I encourage you guys to follow it that way, um, because that is how you'll benefit the most. But this video has been requested multiple times. And I've been saying, oh, I'll make it this week. I'll make it this week. I finally made it. And here it is. The Beginner's Guide to Calisthenics. I hope this was helpful. But anyways, have a great day. And God bless you guys.